الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we ask His help and we seek His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil inside us and from the evil consequences of our bad actions. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, no one can guide. I testify that there is no God to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our master, our leader, our teacher, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز وهو أصدق القائلين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَى بِآيَاتِنَا أَنْ أَخْرِجْ قَوْمَكَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِكُلِّ صَبَّارٍ شَكُورٍ صدق الله العظيم this ayah that I just recited, it's in Surat Ibrahim. And it's a part of a passage that was conveyed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is conveyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. We just started the Islamic year. This month, the month of Muharram, is the first month of the Islamic year. And Shahrullah al Muharram, the first month of the Islamic calendar, is a month in which the Prophet Muhammad used to observe a lot of fasting. He actually once said, Inna afdal al siyami ba'da Ramadan, siyamu shahrillah al Muharram. That the best fasting after the fasting of Ramadan is fasting the month of Muharram. So the month of Muharram is a special blessed month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to us in order to draw near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Izz ibn Abdi Salam, rahimahullah, great scholar, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made certain times special in order to encourage his servants to do righteous deeds. The 10th day of this month, which was yesterday, is known as Ashura or the day of Ashura. It's one of these days that has a special significance in Islam. When the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina, according to Sa'id ibn Jubayr radiallahu an, he said when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam migrated to Medina, he saw that the Israelites used to fast on that day. So he asked about the reason. And he was told, Ya Rasulullah, هَذَا يَوْمٌ نَجَّ اللَّهُ فِيهِ مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ This is a day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and his people from the oppression of the Pharaoh. So Musa celebrated that day through fasting. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ نَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِمُوسَى مِنْهُمْ 
Then Rasulullah sallallahu responds is that we have more right to Moses alayhi salam than anybody else. So he from that year forward, the Prophet sallallahu started to fast the day of Ashura and he encouraged people to fast it. Why did they fast again? To show gratitude to Allah subhanahu. The ayah I just recited at the beginning, it says, وَذَكِّرُهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Remind him with the days of Allah. Ya Musa, Ya Musa, remind him with the days of Allah. And what are the days of Allah? The days of Allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you from any type of harm. The days of Allah are the days when you went around, when you had a problem, and you went around right and left. Right, looking for somebody to help you and there was nobody there for you. You know, it's, it was that time when he had a trouble and he went to everybody that you know. And people were telling you, look, if I could, I would, but really it's out of my hand. But you went to the Most High. You went to the one who is capable, the one who has the ability to protect you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the days of Allah. Ya Musa, remind him with the days of Allah. And I want you to picture this. I want you to imagine how the people of Musa were feeling on that day. They just fled Egypt. You know, after suffering years of oppression, they had just escaped the Pharaoh and his army. They were under extreme stress. Probably they were extremely tired and exhausted. And they were waiting for their prophet to, you know, um, motivate them, lift their spirit, and he did. And again, you would think, you know, a leader in a situation like this, people just left their hometowns, people were killed, their, their, their children were slaughtered, their women and, and, and girls were enslaved. Musa definitely will talk about, or any leader in that situation, you would think he will talk about resilience or willpower or patience or the reward of those who are patient, but he didn't. He actually spoke to them about shukr, about gratitude. What gratitude? What gratitude? I'm going through all these trials and problems and he's talking to me about gratitude. See, brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes when we go through trials, a lot of us respond by complaining. Some they manage to be patient. But the very, very few of people who actually who are actually great, grateful, they actually show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And you're not, you don't show gratitude for the trial. No. You don't show gratitude for the hard times or for the troubles. You show gratitude for the opportunity that this moment presents you. You thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to rise to a challenge. You thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to stand up for what you believe in. You thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to learn how to be patient and to grow. That's what you show gratitude for. وَذَكِّرُهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Remind him with the days of Allah. Wallahi, if I ask you right now, all of you, just close your eyes and think about something, you know, an incident, that nobody was there for you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every one of us, there is something in your mind that you tried every single person that you know in this earth and they weren't able to help. They weren't, they weren't able to help you. And it was only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It was only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa dakkirhum bi ayamillah. We have so many blessings and favors from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And the right response, brothers and sisters, to these favors is to show gratitude. Gratitude is one of the most important qualities of a Muslim. As a matter of fact, some scholars they consider it to be the foundation the foundation upon this that Islam is built upon. It's the foundation of our religion. You know, because if you're not grateful, you're, you're jealous, you're envious, you're greedy, you're arrogant. Gratitude, brothers and sisters, is to acknowledge 
And listen carefully to this. Gratitude is to acknowledge that you are treated well by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're being treated well by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's gratitude. That's when you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know? It's one of the most important characteristics that we can develop. And it can actually lead to a, 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 a more positive and a happier life. As a matter of fact, yesterday I read something, a study in UC Davis about gratitude. I was getting ready for the khutbah and I saw this. It was amazing. It was amazing. They said, they had actually proven that practicing gratitude has so many benefits physically, mentally, and also spiritually on you. They said, for example, you know, gratitude can lower your blood pressure boost immunity, improve the quality of your sleep. They said it reduces the risk of depression, so suicide and, and anxiety, drug and, and alcohol abuse. They said also it blocks all these negative emotions like regret, envy, depression, anger. You know, and they said that the people are grateful. They, they have lower levels of stress. They eat better. They exercise more. So being grateful will actually lead to happiness. And this is what Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah said. He said three things will make you happy. One of them is showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you happy. And the greatest, the greatest blessing or the greatest benefit of gratitude is increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, if you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will increase you, not only one time, but I will increase you and increase you and increase you and increase you. I will give you so much blessings. But all you have to do is just show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the other half of the ayah, it says, وَلَا إِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ but if you are ungrateful for the blessings and the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, then his punishment, be aware, know that his punishment is severe. If you are ungrateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. Wallahi, it's just an equation. Gratitude equals increasing of blessings. Ingratitude equals what? Loss of blessings. As the poet said, if you are in a blessing, so guard it. How you guard a blessing? By showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By showing gratitude. And if you don't, then it will be taken away from you. You know? And it's, it's, it's a disease in our time now that people are ungrateful. People complaining about everything. They complain about their livings. They complain about their educations. They their homes, their cars, their spouses, their children. They complain about things that they don't have. And if you're someone who constantly complaining about things that you do not have, there is no way you're going to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no way that you'll be able to acknowledge that you are treated well by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, an ungrateful, ungrateful person, ungrateful person, sorry, Ungrateful person is someone who doesn't necessarily comes out and say, hey, I'm ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. But if you're constantly complaining and whining and, and being depressed about the things that you don't have, then definitely you are ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's very dangerous. Again, because you risk losing the blessings and the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is currently giving you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showered you with, with blessings and favors. Some are zahira, some are open and clear, evident, you can see it. And some are batina, some you're not even aware of. You know, man, you eat, when you eat a meal, you, there is no buttons where you can hit and say, you know, liquid coming through, you know, or 
hard food coming through. You don't do this. You don't say that. Allah does that for you. Allah does that for you. You don't get up in the morning every morning and say, Ya Allah, thank you so much for another day. After breathing, for example, you don't say, Ya Allah, thank you for each breath. That I, you, nobody does that. And these are ni'am from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're not aware of. You know, Dawood alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the least of your blessings upon me? He said, breathe. Allah said that to Dawood, breathe. That's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So guard the ni'mah, protect the ni'mah by being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there is an ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا قَرْيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُطْمَئِنَّةً يَأْتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا رَغَضًا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example about a town, a city. It had, you know, provision in abundance. Sustenance was coming from everywhere, right and left. Nowadays, you eat your rice from India, right? Right? We get our shoes, shoes are made in Italy or France or, you know, you get your coffee from South America or in Ethiopia. You know, you go to Trader Joe's and you get your... That, all these things are ni'am, are blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are not aware of. You know, sometimes I say this to myself. Just like anybody my age, I'm 41 years old. You know, I don't own a house. I don't have a retirement plan. You know, I don't have savings. But I have a child. And sometimes, you know, I, it just it kills me. And I think about, man, if I die today, who's going to take care of that child? But two things hit me so hard that wake me up. You should not be asking that question. Number one is, you're not the creator. You're not her maker. And so you're not going to be more merciful to her than the one who created her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you go today, know for sure that this child will be taken care of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second thing is, I reflect, I go back and think about where I came from. And I came from a small little town in Egypt. In the 80s, I saw, I used to see women get up early in the morning before Fajr and after Fajr. They would go, to, they would go to, the, uh, to get water. And water, because they didn't have running water in their homes. You know, the entire town had only three hand water pump. You know the water pump? Not the electric one. Not the one with the hand one. It's, it's a workout actually, if you do that for an hour, it's a workout. Women used to get up every morning, line up, wait for their turns to fill up jars of water. Sometimes they will have to do like a few, you know, trips. You know, they will have to do future. And sometimes it takes hours and hours to get water for food and water and, you know, washing and showering and all of that. Nowadays, man, you go into your house, it's a, it's a faucet. You turn it on to the right, cold water, to the left, hot water. It's magic, isn't it? You know how many people in the world do not have access to running water, more than 900 million do not have access to running water. People in Africa, they have urinal problem because of the water they drink. It's brown water. So when you think about that, it's just the reality hits you and you say, SubhanAllah, thank you Allah, you better show gratitude to Allah SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ إِلَا تُحْصُوهَا If you were to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you wouldn't be able to. Because they are so many. Man, a jar of honey in that town where I came from, a jar of honey in somebody's table, it's a sign of wealth. It's a sign of wealth. So alhamdulillah. You know, some of us did not have to go through any of this. Right? Some of us, a lot of us, didn't even have to see this. And so you have to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'am that you already have. Don't be greedy. Be content. Say alhamdulillah and move on. If you paid off your house, alhamdulillah, or you bought it cash, alhamdulillah. 
you know, don't go, like, don't come like, a few years later, 10 years later, and then, you know, I'm going to put myself in debt again to get a little bit bigger house. The one that you have is good. Just keep it. And say, Alhamdulillah. Right? Wallahi, it's good. Say, Alhamdulillah, and move on. There are so many ni'am that we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for day in and day out. The ni'mah of being a Muslim, isn't that a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that deserves gratitude? You know? وَمِمَّا زَادَنِي فَخْرًا وَتِيهًا وَصِرْتُ بِإِخْمَصِي أَتَأُ الصُّرَيَّ دُخُولِي تَحْتَ قَوْلِكَ يَا عِبَادِي وَأَنْ صَيَّرْتَ أَحْمَدَ لِي نَبِيًّا As the poet said, what makes, you, what makes me so proud and pompous is, is that she called me your servant. And he made me a Muslim. And he sent me Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a prophet. Having a good personality, isn't that a ni'mah that you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? Because not every person has good qualities. People are backbiting each other every single moment. People insult and plot for one another, abuse one another every single day. If you're not one of those people, that's a great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. If you, if you are married, you have a spouse, you have children, they love you. Isn't that a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Man, your kid gets up in the morning and says, Baba, I love you. Oh my God. Isn't that a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That He put people around you to love you and express these, their emotions to you. I love you. It's big. It's a big blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, it's a big blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, إذا أنت أصبحت معافا في جسدك If you get up in the morning, you're healthy in your body. Healthy in your body. Secure in your place. You have a food, you have food for the day. فَقَدْ حِيزَتْ لَكَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَا فِيهَ Then you are considered to be the happiest person alive. Healthy in your body. Healthy. Isn't that a ni'mah? Imam al-Shafi'i said, As-sihhatu taj ala ru'us al-asihha' la yaraha illa al-marda. He said, rahimahullah, that health is a crown on the healthy, on the, head of the, on the head of the healthy. Only sick people can see it. Only sick people can see it. Because you don't see it because it's a ni'mah that you're not aware of. You go to the gym three or four times a day, you're slim, you're fit. But you're not, you're not aware that this is a great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get up in the morning, there are some people they didn't get up. There are some people that get up and they had to empty bags of urine because they couldn't go to the restroom because they ill. Right? Isn't that a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Seriously, isn't that a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Having your eyes and your ears, isn't that ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we should show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all these great blessings. Secure in your place. Being secure in your place is a ni'mah. How many people don't have anything? They don't have a roof in their hands. There are people, countries, millions of people were driven out of their hometowns. Their hometowns were destroyed. Their countries were completely destroyed. And you're here secure. Say alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wallahi. Say alhamdulillah. Wa shukri lillah. Ya Allah, you are so generous. You are so generous, man. You are in a good hands. You know, you are good hands. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worship a merciful Lord, a generous Lord. So we need to change our, our attitude. We need to stop complaining and be among people, among those who are showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Get up tomorrow. This is your home. Get up in the morning and just start your day differently. You know? Start your day differently. Start your day by considering that this is not just another day of your life. This is that day that you are, you are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's given to you. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know? Open your eyes and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you actually have eyes that you can open. Get out and open your heart to all these blessings that are around you and let the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala flow through you. 
You know, acknowledging the blessing is a blessing in itself as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are grateful to him for the so many blessings that he bestowed upon us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala Allahumma laka alhamd, hamdan tayyiban mubarakan fihi kama tuhibbuhu wa tarda Allahumma laka alhamd hatta tarda wa laka alhamd idha radid wa laka alhamd ba'da rida wa laka alhamd ala kulli hal wa laka alhamd bil iman wa laka alhamd bil islam wa laka alhamd ala kulli hal Allahumma salli wa salli mubarak ala sayyidina Muhammad Ya Allah we want to thank you for all the blessings that you gave us, the blessing of family, the blessing of having a community and having a mosque, the blessing of getting together here every week, sitting next to each other and meeting one another. We thank you for, for uh, the blessing of health and wealth. We thank you for the blessing of having families, spouses and children. And we ask you to, to continue to bless us, Allahumma amin. Ya Allah, we ask you to continue to bless us, Ya Allah. We ask you to make us among those who are grateful to you and be, and be among those who, are, uh, uh, who acknowledge your favors and blessings upon them. Allahumma ameen. Ameen, ameen. Subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasufoon. Wa salamun ala mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to um, cure everybody who is ill. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the distress of everybody who is going through hard times. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our community and all Muslim communities and all Muslims in each and every corner of this globe. Allahumma ameen.